friends and welcome to the start of a very exciting video. Today I'm going to be doing my 2022 bookshelf tour. Um, I never did a 2021 video because I was moving right around the time where I typically would have filmed it and I did do like an overview of them but like I never wound up posting it so you didn't really get a glimpse of those shelves before I moved. Quite a bit has changed since the one I did the year before, obviously. Um, I'm now in a new room. My shelves have actually stayed the same mostly, but I have two more shelves than I did in the first tour and also a book cart that is over that way that I'm currently using as a TBR cart. And so there's lots to show you. I'm very excited. I will say though that my shelves are not exactly organized like the ideal way that I would want them to be just because of a lack of space. I kind of have to squish together genres sometimes and stack books and then I also have books that I think I might want to unhaul but then haven't been able to let go of and so they're just kind of like there. So I just feel like my shelves for me personally are not all the way where I want them to be. But anyway with all that being said I guess I will just get into the tour now. I'm not going to start with the shelves behind me. I'm actually going to start with the shelves that are down that way. This shelf is my nightstand as well. It's next to my bed and it is my classics contemporary middle grade kind of catch-all shelf but like mainly classics and like literary fiction as well. So the first shelf on this nightstand shelf is my classics shelf and there are also some classics I feel like further down. Starting with the first few books on top I have some poetry. So I have Swimming Lessons by Lily Reinhardt, Dear Girl by Jim Mayrock and Blue Horses by Mary Oliver. Then I have Kate Bear's poetry collections, What Kind of Woman, and I Hope This Finds You Well. And then the last book I had squished on top was Frankenstein or The Modern Prometheus by Mary Shelley. And I have some of my favorite classics editions ever, the Penny Dreadful collection of Dracula, Dorian Gray, and Frankenstein. These books are so stunning. They have these beautiful sprayed edges and I'm obsessed with them. They're illustrated and I love them a lot. <laughs> Some of my favorite classics. Then I have this beautiful edition of Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy, which I have yet to read, but will tackle one day. Then I have this Borders edition of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde and other short stories by Robert Louis Stevenson. And let me know if anyone remembers Borders, but I think I'm going to unhaul this one because I have this Barnes and Noble edition of essentially the same thing. And that matches the rest of my classics a lot better than the Borders edition does. So I did annotate this one a bit though, so I have to transfer my annotations back into this one and then I can unhaul that one. So that's a project for one day. Then to start off the rest of my Barnes and Noble classics, I have Dante Alighieri's Inferno, Daniel Deronda and Middlemarch by George Eliot, The Beautiful and the Damned by F. Scott Fitzgerald, Madame Bovary by Gustave Flaubert, Mansfield Park by Jane Austen, and Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. And then I have my Modern Library Classics, and these are my favorite additions to annotate and collect, but I, they're hard to find. There are not a lot of them. Um, but I have Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte, Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte, The Picture of Dorian Gray again by Oscar Wilde, and Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass by Lewis Carroll, and then finally Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen along with this cute little Pemberley candle, which I really like and will be burning next time I read Pride and Prejudice. Then I have Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. Then The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald and A Room of One's Own by Virginia Woolf. And then lastly for this shelf, Persuasion by Jane Austen. This next shelf is a pretty eclectic mix of classics behind <laughs> The Sun and Your Flowers and then middle grade literary fiction, contemporary, just kind of everything really whatever could fit in these two stacks here. So I will go through them now, but it's quite a random assortment. To start with the little knickknacks here, I have this Robin Funko from Stranger Things. I have a contemporary candle, a poetry candle, and book queen. And then I also have this random bookmark from The Strand, which I use a lot. This is one of my favorites actually. So the first book I have is None Other Than Normal People by Sally Rooney. I need to find a better situation for like my favorite contemporary slash literary-ish fiction um, because I want them on display somewhere, but I don't really have a display shelf for them yet. But Normal People definitely deserves to be somewhere on display. 
Then I got Dark Witch, book one of the Cousins of Dwyer trilogy by Nora Roberts at the Strand only because it was used and it's set in Ireland and it's like a fantasy romance I think and it has witches and that just sounds like everything I would enjoy. <laughs> then I have The Giver and Gathering Blue by Lois Lowry, the first two books in the Giver Quartet. Then I have Turtles All the Way Down, The Fault in Our Stars, and Looking for Alaska by John Green. Recommended for you by Laura Silverman. All the Walls of Belfast by Sarah J. Carlson. Yoke by Mary H. K. Choi. Thanks for the Trouble by Tommy Wallach. My annotated edition of The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. And Some Kind of Happiness by Claire Legrand, one of my favorite middle grades of all time. Then Hiding Behind the Sun and Her Flowers by Ruby Cower. I have The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Shbosky, which brings me to another hidden classic section. So I have The Major English Romantic Poets, Wordsworth, The Major Works, A Philosophical Enquiry into the Sublime and Beautiful by Edmund Burke, The Penguin Book of the Undead, and The Penguin Book of Dragons, two classics compilations, two Penguin Classics compilations that were edited by the professor of my Monsters, Magic, and the Undead History class, Scott Bruce, and they were really, really fun to read. And then lastly, Edith Wharton's The House of Mirth. And then going into this next stack, I have these two tiny little classics, Transformation by Mary Shelley and Jason and Medea by Apollonius of Rhodes. Then I have the first book of the Warrior Cats series by Erin Hunter, Into the Wild, because my friend Molly and I want to reread this and like go back to our sixth grade warrior cat obsession. And so I have this for when we do that. Then I have Modern Lovers by Emma Straub. Then I have The Handmaid's Tale and Alias Grace by Margaret Atwood. The Queen's Gambit by Walter Tevis. The Secret History by Donna Tart. Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro. Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. The Storied Life of A.J. Fickery by Gabrielle Zavine. The Diary of a Bookseller by Sean Bythel, which I think has to be my favorite memoir. The Idiot by Elif Batuman. And then lastly, Bunny and All's Well by Mona Awad. Odd. And then this bottom shelf here is another random one. Um, I have the Harry Potter series here, which I won't take out because everyone knows what they look like. And then I have A Brief History of Time by Stephen Hawking and The Thief by Megan Whelan Turner, which I'm also not going to take out because that's a pain. But then I have Better Together by Christine Riccio. Again, but better by Christine Riccio, which I loved. A History Book on Ancient Greece by Thomas R. Martin. Then I have The Chronicles of the One Trilogy by Nora Roberts. And then a few random hardcovers, I mean paperbacks, that just didn't fit above. And those are The Gollum and the Genie by Helene Wecker, The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Stefan, and The Bone Clocks by David Mitchell. <laughs> Starting at the top shelf of my rainbow shelves, I have my blacks, like grays and purples, and going into some dark blues also. And as you can see, I have some of my Funkos here. I love color coordinating my Funkos and candles to the colors on my rainbow shelf. It's so fun and I'm very excited <laughs> that I have rainbow shelves to do that now. But I have Tom Riddle, Kylo Ren, and Dumbledore and then a bookish um, Akatar inspired candle on this top shelf here. And then starting with the books, I have The Dark Days Club by Alison Goodman, Truth Witch by Susan Dennard, Blood Air by Emily Wenzow, Obsidio by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff, Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin, my paperback copy of Divergent by Veronica Roth, which is the first copy that I ever read, and I've had this for seven years now, so it's very <laughs> sentimental to me, The Demon King by Cinda Williams Chima, Magonia by Maria Devana Headley, Muse of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor, Nightmares by Jason Siegel and Kristen Miller, Skyward by Brandon Sanderson, The Dating Plan by Sarah Desai, Wayfarer by Alexandra Bracken, Bitter Blue by Kristen Kishore, Outlander by Diana Gabaldon, The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern, Amari and the Night Brothers by B.B. Alston, The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden, and The Boneless Mercies by April Genevieve Tucholk. And moving down a shelf, we have my favorite shelf of the rainbow, which is my pinks and reds shelf. And we also have a little bit of white over there. But then we have my pink Ahsoka Valentine's Funko that my friend got me, Hermione from the Yule Ball, Belle from Beauty and the Beast, Harley Quinn, and 
Arya Stark for my Funkos. And then the first book on the shelf is The Black Jewels Trilogy by Anne Bishop, Emergency Contact by Mary H.K. Choi, Severance by Ling Ma, Little Princess by Frances Hodgson Burnett, Animal Life by Laura Ehrlich, Little Women by Louisa May Alcott, The Subtle Knife by Philip Pullman, Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard by Rick Riordan, Throne of Fire by Rick Riordan, A Collection of Grimm's Fairy Tales by The Brothers Grimm, The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern, Scythe by Neil Shusterman, Plain Bad Heroines by Emily M. Danforth, Days of Blood and Star Light by Lainey Taylor, Wicked Saints by Emily A. Duncan, A Vow So Bold and Deadly by Bridget Kamara, Storm Dancer by Jay Kristoff, Wind Witch by Susan Dennard, Flamecaster by Cinda Williams Chima, Words of Radiance by Brendan Sanderson, and Foxheart by Claire Legrand. Then moving down, we go into the greens, yellows, and oranges, and lots of fun goes to go on this one. I have Grogu, Beth from The Queen's Gambit, another Harley Quinn, Belle from Beauty and the Beast, Wonder Woman, and Ahsoka, and Charmander, along with the Mia Corvair candle. So first on this shelf, we have Kinslayer by Jay Kristoff, my collector's edition of Insurgent that one of my best friends got for me, A Heart So Fierce and Broken by Bridget Kamara, Storm of Swords by George R. R. Martin, The Toll by Neil Shusterman, The Wonderling by Mira Bartok, Uprooted by Naomi Novik, Anne of Green Gables by L.M. Montgomery, Stone Mattress by Margaret Atwood, Lizzie and Dante by Mary Bly, Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor, Kingdom of Ash by Sarah J. Mass, A Clash of Kings by George R. R. Martin, The Near Witch by V.E. Schwab, The Amber Spyglass by Philip Pullman, The Red Pyramid by Rick Riordan, Illuminae by Amy Kaufman and G. Kristoff, The Serpent Shadow by Rick Riordan, and A Feast for Crows by George R. R. Martin. Then we go to my greens, like finishing up my greens and my blue shelf into gray and white. I have Bulbasaur on here, one of my favorite candles, Winter Solstice, Cinderella from the live action, Squirtle, Belle from the live action. But to start with the books, first we have Thunderhead by Neil Schusterman, Sight Witch by Susan Dennard, Exciting Times by Nisha Dolan, The Hammer of Thor and the Ship of the Dead, books two and three in the Magnus Chase trilogy by Rick Riordan, Winter Keep by Kristen Kishore, Chosen Ones by Veronica Roth, Faithful by Alice Hoffman, Gemina by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass by Lewis Carroll, The Buried Giant by Kazu Ishiguru, The Apothecary by Mail Malloy, The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Burnett, 13 Treasures by Michelle Harrison, which was one of my favorite books that I'd read when I was like eight or nine or somewhere around that age. And I've kept it all this time and I kind of want to reread it. The Tangle Root Palace by Marjorie Liu. The Invention of Hugo Cabret by Brian Selznick. Passenger by Alexandra Bracken. The Golden Compass by Philip Pullman. My Collector's Edition of Divergent by Veronica Roth, which I got in my first ever shopping spree to Barnes & Noble. My UK Edition of Dark Dawn by Jake Kristoff. And lastly, A Dance with Dragons by George R. R. Martin. And then we have my very chaotic at the moment bottom shelf, which used to feature one of my favorite children's books, How to Build Fairy Houses, um, which is now missing. I don't know where it is, which is kind of sad. I have Graceling and Fire by Kristen Kishore because I don't have any space for them on the rainbow right now, but <laughs> they will be filtered in at some point. And then I just have my Twilight Saga and my Shakespeare books, which I think is funny that they're next to each other. And then this random Star Wars trilogy collection from Borders which is ancient, like my brother and I got this when we were probably around eight or nine. Some more candles for my collection. And so this is the, the last shelf. Oh, and then I have two of my childhood favorite fairy tale collections. Oh, there's fairy houses, oh my God. <laughs> this edition of the Grimm's Fairy Tales, which is one of my favorite books, in the world. This is Fairy Houses by Tracy Kane, which is my one of my childhood favorites, as I said. And then this is another edition of Grimm's Fairy Tales that I love so much. Um, can you tell I like fairy tales and fairies? So that is the last shelf of my rainbow. Okay, and then before we get to my main shelves, the main event, um, I wanted to show you guys my book cart. And I'm not gonna go into the books on here in too much detail just because these are all the books on my summer TBR, so you can watch that video if you want to know all the books that are in here because they are stacked pretty tightly in. These are just all the books I want to read in the summer. I have the Shadow and Bone trilogy here. I have a lot of middle grades. I have some literary fiction and then quite a bit of fantasy. Now we 
get to my main shelves, my Billy, Ikea Billy bookshelves, my favorite shelves that I have and where most of my favorite books of all time are. Without further ado, I guess let's just get into the top shelf. I'm not going to take any of these books out because there is no shelf to put them on. Um, and you can pretty clearly see what they all are anyway. I mostly have series up here. So I have my Lord of the Rings trilogy, it's kind of some first books and series. Then I have all of my Cassie Clear books up here, most of which I have not read, which I plan to at some point. I have my Throne of Glass paperbacks. Then I have the French editions of the first three Throne of Glass books. And all of these books here are French editions of some of my favorites. So La Guerre du Papo is The Poppy War. Then The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, Nevernight, God's Grave, the first book of the Shades of Magic trilogy by V.E. Schwab, and Strange the Dreamer, Le Faiseur du Rêve. Please don't judge my pronunciation because it's been a long time since I've been in my French class. But yeah, this is the top shelf. I really like how it kind of just like extends the books all the way to almost the ceiling pretty much. And then we come down to a fantasy shelf where I just have lots of tall fantasy books, mostly my Stephanie Garber shelf, um, but then also some collector's editions as well. So first I have the collector's edition of The Court of Thorns and Roses, which is so beautiful. Then my two collector's editions of Throne of Glass. I got both the US slash UK and the, I believe it was Australia. Australia. Like there were, there was an international version and maybe just a US version. Um, and I got both of them because <laughs> I could not resist. Then I have An Enchantment of Ravens and Vespertine by Margaret Rogerson. And I also have Sorcery of Thorns, but that is on my TBR cart right now. So not on the shelf currently, but it is there. Then I have the Carvel trilogy by Stephanie Garber, one of my favorite YA fantasy trilogies of all time. And I have annotated and tabbed all of these books so they all have like this little rainbow going on on the pages which i love so much and then my many editions of once upon a broken heart also by stephanie garber to the left is the owl crate exclusive edition then the barnes and noble exclusive edition and then just the regular uk hardcover and do i regret buying all of these maybe a little bit for my wallet but do i love them all yes will i probably force myself to downsize at some point also yes but for now i'm just enjoying having them all on my shelves uh very much then i have my lit joy exclusive editions of strange the dreamer and muse of nightmares by laney taylor some of the most beautiful books i own if you want to see these like in depth i have a video unboxing them and i show like all the cool things inside so check that out if you're interested in seeing just more about these books <laughs> and then lastly for this shelf i have the unspoken name by ak larkwood i don't know much about this fantasy but i am really intrigued by it and it's kind of just on the shelf because it matches the height of the other books then moving right along to the very next shelf on the top this is mostly an adult fantasy shelf the unspoken name kind of spilling over from that um, but I have some of my favorites and also some that I have not read. The first being The Steel Crow Saga by Paul Kruger. Then The Bone Char Daughter by Andrea Stewart. The Ruin of Kings by Jen Lyons. Master of Sorrows by Justin T. Call, which has one of my favorite covers ever. Lore by Alexandra Bracken. My signed first edition of Nevernight by Jake Kristoff, along with my matching Mia Corvair Funko. And then the signed first editions of God's Grave and Dark Dawn to go along with those. Then Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bardugo. The Shadow and Bone Collector's Edition, also by Lee Bardugo, which is so shiny and foily. I am obsessed with it. And then another one of the most beautiful books I own, The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. Then if we go down from the first shelf I showed you here, we have my Throne of Glass shelf. I have these Rowan and Aelin candles and my Aelin Funko to match Empire of Storms. I'm not going to pull all these out because everyone knows what Throne of Glass looks like, but I have the whole series in hardcover right here, minus Kingdom of Ash, which is on my rainbow shelf you saw earlier. I will show you the first edition of Throne of Glass though that I have that I stole from my school library. I did replace it with a different copy, but I needed this one <laughs> for my collection. And then I have my set of Throne of Glass in the nerdy ink dust jackets. Um, so there's Assassin's Blade, Throne of Glass, Crown of Midnight, Air of Fire, then Queen of Shadows, Empire of Storms, Tower of Dawn, and Kingdom of Ash and i just want to say i don't own two copies of every 
thrown on glass book and hardcover. I do own quite a bit of them in duplicate, but um, some of these are just like random books that I've found used and gotten really cheap. So I'm, I'm not that excessive. I am very excessive, not entirely. <laughs> and then we have my Akatar shelf and also Crescent City and also Strange the Dreamer and also Fury Born slash the Imperium trilogy. This is kind of just like a, a favorite fantasies of all time shelf, um, largely taken up by Sarah J Maas. So the first set I have is also from Nerdy Inc, who also did the Throne of Glass dust jackets I just showed you. So these are the A Court of Thrones and Roses ones, and they are so stunning. I am very obsessed with them. I especially love the A Court of Silver Flames one because I love Nesta so much. But then we have the Illumicrate exclusive Akatar dust jackets by Alithian Art is the artist and these are just the most stunningly illustrated book jackets that I have ever come across. I am so obsessed with them. I'm so in love with them. Everything about it I love. I especially love the colors of A Court of Frost and Starlight. I also just had to share the back of all these because I think I like the back covers even more than the front. It's just like these silhouettes in foil and Oh my god, they are like just the prettiest things I've ever seen. Especially Nesta on the back of A Court of Silver Flames. Okay, then moving on to Crescent City, we have A House of Earth and Blood and House of Sky and Breath by Sarah J Maas, both the Waterstones exclusives. But I'm very upset that um, House of Sky and Breath doesn't have the sprayed edges that House of Earth and Blood does. Like the only reason I got the Waterstones version was because I thought it was going to be the same um, and it wasn't. So that was a waste of money. Then I have the UK hardcovers of Strange the Dreamer and Muse of Nightmares, which took me years to track down. And then lastly for this shelf, we have the Imperium Trilogy by Claire Legrand, my favorite ever. I love these covers also, just a very stunning series all around with stunning characters as well and the writing exquisite please read these um but there's furyborn kingsbane and lightbringer i just i love these a lot okay and then we go to underneath my throne of glass shelf to one of my smaller condensed shelves which i had to do to be able to fit in my funko shelf up here and these aren't my favorite not an ideal situation but it's not the worst first on this shelf is the atlas six by olive blake this is the self-published version that was available before it got traditionally published, which I'm happy I snagged. And as you can see, I tabbed this one a lot. And then I have quite a few V.E. Schwab books. I have A Darker Shade of Magic, Vicious and Vengeful, and then the This Savage Song duology. And I have not read any of these yet, but I really need to, and I am planning to at some point. I don't want to say soon anymore because it won't be soon, but definitely need to get on my V.E. Schwab backlist. And then the next stack is the Fallen Kingdom series, which is a really underrated fantasy series. Um, I have the last book right here because I can't fit on the shelf. I really enjoyed these. I wouldn't say they made like an overwhelmingly lasting impression on me, but I love these covers and especially this one. This is my favorite cover to like exist in fantasy and this one's pretty good too. But definitely a very solid multi POVs fantasy, so I would recommend, especially if you enjoy Throne of Glass. Then I have some of my prized possessions, my advanced reader copies of the Imperium trilogy. These are very precious to me, and I plan to annotate them at some point. And then I have an advanced copy of These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong, which I have not finished yet. I got like 200 pages into, so I really need to restart this one and actually get all the way through it. Then next to that squished shelf is this squished shelf with Geralt of Rivia lying down, apparently. Um, move him out of the way. But we have some more adult fantasy slash some YA, just whatever wasn't fitting elsewhere pretty much <laughs> is what this shelf is. Randomly, I have my copy of Sawkill Girls, in the stack by Claire Legrand, which I don't really know why. And then Mistborn by Brandon Sanderson, which I really need to read. And then one of my favorite adult fantasy series of all time, The Poppy War Trilogy by RF Kuang. Very excited for Babel's upcoming release, but I have yet to read The Burning God. So hoping to reread books one and two this year. Then I have the rest of my Grishaverse collection. So from left to right, we have The Language of Thorns, The Lives of Saints, The Six of Crows Collector's Edition, and then King of Scars and Rule of Wolves, which I have yet to read. I really need to get to those two. Then I have my Target exclusive edition of House of Sky and Breath. I don't remember the extra content that was in this one that made me get it, but 
I will discover it <laughs> when I get there, I guess. And then I have both the UK and the US covers of Empire of the Vampire by Jay Kristoff. This is the Barnes Noble exclusive edition. That's why the backdrop is red. Um, the normal edition, it's black. But these are just some very, very cool looking books. And I am very excited to read them. Okay, and then moving down a shelf is one of my favorite shelves of my whole entire collection and that is my Skullduggery Pleasant shelf. I also have some Star Wars Funkos here but um, I'm not going to pull out the Skullduggery Pleasant series because I have shown them on my last bookshelf tour and I talk about them quite a bit on my channel. Also I'm running low on time and if you can hear the dryer in the background I apologize for that but I am going on a trip in like 10 minutes and I'm behind and doing chores and stuff. So this is the shelf. I just have lots of the series. It's a 15 book series at this point. Not a lot more to say for this one. And then moving right along is my Rick Riordan shelf. I'm also not going to pull these out because like I said I've shown them before and everyone has seen these at this point. Um, but behind my illustrated edition, if we sneak back here, I do have some extra editions. I have my paperback copies of the series of Percy Jackson and then some of the extra books. And then finally, this is my leftmost bottom shelf. So on the bottom here, I have just kind of a random assortment of books. I have the Stocking Jack the Ripper series, Addie LaRue, The Sisters of the Winter Wood, which is a new acquisition for me. Just some random fantasy that you can see here. I have my Harleen graphic novel, and then behind that, the art and making of Penny Dreadful. And then behind that, my Divergent official illustrated movie companion, my tour edition of Crescent City, which I just haven't found a place for yet. And then the stack of books are books that I'm thinking of unhauling, but I'm not sure about yet. And then for the very last shelf, this is quite disorganized. These are my mini editions of Throne of Glass, and then duplicate editions of the Skullduggery Pleasant series. I have my illustrated editions of Jane Eyre and Dracula, and then a lot of advanced reader copies that I just haven't gotten to. City of Brass and the Kingdom of Copper are not advanced copies. I just have those there because they match the height. And then my monstrous graphic novels, which I love, and some other graphic novels, and my Akatar and Throne of Glass coloring books. And then from Kakai up are just books that I have to haul right now. And then these are just spillover books from my summer TBR video that I never put away. Um, so that is this shelf. I hate to end the tour so rushed, but I literally have to leave in five minutes and and I really wanted to get this video out by Sunday over the weekend for you guys because I'm very excited about my bookshelf tour. Even though I went through the last few shelves kind of quickly, you can still see what's on there. But yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this tour. I hope you enjoyed getting a look into my shelves, a very in-depth look, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!